Hey folks, welcome to this video on how to paint comic book pages. Um, I'm demonstrating how to paint the artwork for Luminous Ages, my comic book. You can find the comic book for free on luminousages.com. Um, it's usually about an issue, to, a couple of issues behind what we are up to on Patreon. And we're also on Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Anthony Christie, which has all my art and all my comics. And um, today we're going to go through and look at how I've created this artwork. As you can see, this artwork uh, started out with a pencil drawing. Um, I'm sorry I didn't record the pencil drawing for you, but um, this really takes me a while to figure out the pencils and draw it all and kind of get the anatomy to where I'm really happy with it. And um, at the moment, we are, what I've done is I've started in just with a black layer and I start from black and I render in the grayscale values. I render it in black and white. What that allows me to do is kind of work out the direction of the lighting and it's really a good way to kind of figure out the mood and I suppose the colors and everything. But I start in black and white and I use textured brushes as you can see in that mountain and start to create, I suppose, silhouettes and forms and paint in everything with the right values that I want. So I want that dragon to stand out, it kind of looks like a pterodactyl, but it's a dragon. And I want, you know, the titan in the background and the monsters and the creatures to all kind of pop out. So the way to work that out is I've got the pencil drawing, the digital pencil drawing, I've got that in the layer above, and I just render in things um, on top of it. As you can see, I'm rendering on top of this uh, monster guy, this um, four-armed creature, beast, and over here I'm also rendering, I start to render in the foreground and I work out the values, what they are, how to make them look right. And obviously things in the foreground are going to be darker versus things in the midground. And you know, you can see the beast in the foreground so it starts off really, really black and I just lighten him up a little bit so that he stands out in the foreground. And so that's how I start out. I usually start in black and white. Sometimes with a comic book, I do have the pencils and I go straight to color if I've got a really strong color palette in mind. But in this case with Luminous Ages, because it's based on the dream world and magicians that can control dream magic, the major issue is that the color palette can be extremely imaginative and, and made up. So it's very hard, unless I go and take a whole bunch of sunset photos um, of you know pinks and yellows and all that sort of stuff. It's hard for me to work out what color palette I'm going to use straight up. And plus, I like to keep it, um, I like to keep, give it a bit of I suppose spont spontaneous color, um, color creation to it, so that it looks a lot more spontaneous. So it's good to work in black and white first. Get the values right. Work out the direction of the lighting. At the moment, the lighting is coming from the top left, as you can see, uh, by the Titan character, and you know, these are two panels. We've got a small panel at the top and a bottom panel, a bigger panel at the bottom, which tells a big story of the mages fighting or whatever, of all the godly beings fighting. And so it's really good to work in black and white, especially with comic book pages to start off with before you go to color. Because if you get the values right, if you get your mood, and when I say values, I'm talking about grayscale values. When you get the grayscale, reading really well in black and white, it's going to be easier to colour it. Okay, it's, I'm not saying there's not going to be any challenging challenges in colouring it afterwards, but it does make my life a lot easier, um, and your life easier when, you, when you've got your values figured out. Usually if the picture looks good in black and white, it's going to look really good in colour, if you pick the right colours to go with it. One way of really making sure your colour matches your grayscale is to um, look for Look for photos of color, colors that you like and then look at how you can use that palette. Switch that image to black and white and see if you've got a similar value range in your painting and then, then apply that to your painting. But like I said, this is all using imagination and, and being spontaneous because it is imagination, you know, it is an imaginative world. So I'm not, it is, obviously things are based in reality like the anatomy of humans and the anatomy of some of the creatures and things like mountains and, and all that sort of stuff, but lighting is really made up, um, so it's important to remember that. So here I'm just painting the Titan, just making him look uh, detailed, as detailed as possible. 
thing is with comic book pages, you, you, I can pour heaps of time in, in making them all look illustrated. My goal is to make my comic book pages more painterly in style. I'm not going for the ink, you know, traditional ink and coloured comic book pages where you have flats and all that sort of stuff. I have worked in that way before. I've done, um, I've been on a few published comic comics, uh, the Shonen Double Knife feature and the Adventures of Lightning Rod. And I've also worked uh, with the artist from Dragon Cross on doing colours. And we've worked in that style where, you know, the, the traditional inking and colouring, and I, and I like that style. I think it's a great style. It's not, and I'm happy to work that way as well. But I prefer, for me, like for my personal projects, I prefer to paint things and, and it is more work actually. Um, and, and I mean, I'm getting faster at it. So, you know, this is a sped up video, mind you. Um, but you know, this is what I, the style that I prefer for a, for a comic book. Um, you know, I suppose it's, you know, a more of a traditional style. Well, I wouldn't say traditional, it's more of an old school illustrated style. So, there you go, I've flipped on and off the line work so we can see the line work and make sure that everything's working well. So, um, I'm going to be offering videos um, on YouTube free. Uh, I'm going to have a minimum of two videos a month. I'm going to increase my content that I give out to you all and I hope you can all share it and increase the views and likes and, and that sort of stuff because that helps me obviously to get my name out there and, and not to start, you know, hey, if we get a million people watching my videos, I can make money off it. <laughs> and um, that helps a lot, you know, if people just watch my videos. But if you do want more content, um, I have two new videos that I don't put out uh, straight away. I, I have two new videos that come out every month. Sometimes my fans get three videos every month. We have a bonus video. And usually we have more content in the videos that we give our patrons. So usually, if I post a video, say I painted Alice in Wonderland from Alice, if it's a three hour video, I'll, I'll give the whole first hour for free on YouTube and I'll give the last 10 minutes. But my patrons will usually get the full three hour video. So if you're wanting more tutorials um, and you're wanting a lot of content, uh, I have a lot on Patreon and I will be uploading things to Gumroad as well. Um, and so I hope you like it and if you want to support me, even like a dollar helps um, to if you can subscribe to a, for a dollar tier on my Patreon, it's patreon.com Anthony Christo. Um, that that really helps a lot. And because also uh, my fans, the dollar tier also occasionally if we have a bonus video for that month, we have an interview with someone in the industry, or I just do a bonus concept sketch and I want to record it. My patrons are the first one to get that stuff. Or even if it does go on YouTube, my patrons are the first to get the high res version of that plus the files and get a better version than the actual YouTube video, which is sometimes going to be a lower resolution. So what am I doing here? I'm just painting the, the grayscale values. I'm just making sure that things pop out. Because characters are going on top of each other, you need to be careful that they don't blend into each other. And this is why I advise having things in separate layers. Uh, I don't show my layers, unfortunately, uh, because I was in a rush to paint this. Um, I'm pushing out about three Roughly about two to three comic book pages. It's usually two and and one illust finished illustration for patrons. So about three works plus client work every month and going to conventions. So I'm pretty busy. And this is part of the reason why I'm setting up Patreon is because the more clients we get, the more I don't have to travel, the more the less client work I can take on. I can be more selective with the client work I take on, and I can focus. I can pull pour all my time into voted illustrations and so it's not just a comic I'm painting I'm also painting um, characters from public the public domain and fairy tales and mythology so I'll paint Hercules I'll be painting um, Alice in Wonderland Robin Hood what are any characters you can think of that are owned by directly owned by you know a big corporation that we can still legally paint I'll be painting mythology um, and fairy tales and you know, if Alice in Wonderland, you're allowed to paint. And you know, sometimes if I do work for a big company like Disney and they do give me permission to paint Frozen and I'm allowed to sell it, then I get a license. My patrons are going to be the first to get that as well. And that can happen. You know, if I get a job at Magic the Gathering um, and I work for Magic, I'm sure they're going to be cool with me putting some of the content on my Patreon, hopefully. <laughs> I 
fun. Sometimes I do paint and I record the process. I record the process while I talk and I paint. But sometimes um, it really is hard to do both, especially if you're at the phase of working out a painting like this. And sometimes technically things can go wrong as well. Like I did paint a picture, I recorded the whole video, but I forgot to hit record on the voice ex ex uh, voice section. So I didn't record the sound, I just recorded me painting and, me, and a video of me talking, but there's no voice. So then I had to record the audio again. So that's a problem. When you're focused on the work, you can forget to hit certain buttons. So this is one of the beasts in the comic book, a b part of the beast kind. He's also demonic, so he's part beast, part, de part demon. And um, we're just adding in the values, making sure the lighting is going in the right direction, coming in from the top left, shining down on him. So yeah, just painting over the line work afterwards. Sometimes once you've got things, you can have a layer to paint underneath the, the line work. And then once you're confident that you've got it to a good level, then you can start painting on top of your line work as well. So I've, effectively, I've got three layers. One for the underpainting, one for the pencil work, and a la one for a layer above. This guy is a luminary mage. He's summoning... Um, actually, sorry, he's a captivary mage and he's summoning some, some energy, some dream energy, and I suppose he's starting a fight of some sort. I wish I painted this fast. <laughs> this is better. So, you know, in real life, it's about four times slower. And, um,. You know, and time, as time has gone by, as I've painted more and more comic book page, pages, my speed has increased. And I'll, and I'll pass on those, any techniques I have on speeding up, you know, the painting process. But I want to say this first. The best thing to worry about is quality first before speed. You know, make sure the quality of your work is really high quality first. Then focus on building up that speed, you know. Figure out where can you cut back, where don't you have to paint. Here I've created a selection marquee and what that has allowed me to do is paint in lighting and mood and, and to make things pop out, putting a little bit of fog behind the mountain and above it so that that dragon, that worm and the mountain pops out. This page is a lot of work. As you can probably gather, there's a lot of characters on the page and um, a lot of details to get in. This is this is at the start of the comic where um, the comic book world is being created, and well, should I say, luminous the universe of luminous ages is being created. The first planet is called Equatoria. There are many planets in the universe of luminous ages. Um, So, I mean, like Star Wars is called Star Wars, but you have your planets like Endor and millions of planets. Luminous Ages is called Luminous Ages. It, it sums up many ages of, um, of luminaries and captivaries battling it out. Why did I choose the luminaries over the captivaries for the name? It's probably because um, it had a better sound to it. Luminous Ages sounded better than Captivary Ages. And because I'm... Um, I'm illuminating. I'm illuminating manuscripts, so to speak. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm bringing the life and light to a page. It made sense um, to call it luminous ages as well. You know, and because it's a fantasy world, it's luminescent. It's, you know, but you know, as we reveal the powers of luminaries and captivaries, they're quite unique, actually, the superpowers that they have. 
So here I'm adding in just textured, I'm using a textured texture, sorry, I'm just using a textured brush. I'm separating the foreground to the midground, that midground mountain. And the foreground does get a bit darker than it is at the moment, it's very light. This guy on the left is like a beast, beast kind of some form. He's like a mixture between a titan and a beast. And anatomy looks really weird with the arms, but he's a double chested, uh, four armed beast. Kind of like the, the in, in Greek mythology where you have like, you know, 100 armed creatures or whatever. Kind of like inspired by those ideas. But it's just really, I suppose it's very surreal because it's the dream world. The whole idea of Luminous Ages is that there's a dream world, there's the real universe. And the dream world is is where everything starts out. And the real world is, I suppose, a reflection of the dream verse. And whatever happens in the dream verse affects the real world. And sometimes whatever happens in the real world does eventually affect the dream verse in some way as well, slowly but surely. So the, the point is, is there are very surreal creatures that come about, surreal characters, surreal environments, because it's based on the dream world, and the real world is a reflection of the dreams. So here it's just important to get the values separation sorted out really early on. And I think I've done that here, but you see as the time progresses, as the artwork progresses, it gets better and better. Well, I think it does. <laughs> So just you know, basically you have to make sure that you create the right you have the right values above each other. You, know, you have your darks over your lights, your lights over your darks, or and you separate everything. It is hard, there isn't anything in particular that's in focus on this page. It's not like you just focus in on one character here. You I suppose you do look at that Titan, the big Titan, he is the main focal point. But, you know, the whole idea is there are there are many characters you know these are all the creatures not all the creatures but these are the you know the range of creatures that are created to create a, basically to start a battle between the dream world and reality you know because in the dream verse you know people are fighting for ages and ages and ages luminaries and the captiveries and the chosen they're all fighting for dominance over the dream world and no one can win no one is winning in the dream verse so they create reality and they create races and creatures in their image. You know, the dragon gods create their dragon kin in their image. The titans, the titan god, the beast, and the titan and the beast god create their version of themselves in reality. So you have all these dragon gods and stuff like that, and and they're basically creating six races that reflect themselves and creatures of many kinds that are images of themselves in reality, and those. Those creatures in reality fight for control over reality. And then once they have control over reality, they can also go in and jump into the dream world and start helping and fighting for dominance, whether it's, you know, the it's usually there's two forces. There's the dark forces, which are the nightmare, the, the mare realm, and then there's the tranquil, which is people that just want a, a, a happy, peaceful dream. And... Um, and there's also in between, you know, there's people that are a bit of both, that are, that are, you know, they're torn between the nightmare realm and they're also torn between tranquility, you know. They're, they're I suppose, they're lured into nightmares because, because of the power that nightmares have over people through fear, you know. And fear is a very powerful tool that can control whole populations and stuff. And even good people are corrupted by fear and they're corrupted by nightmares, you know, to become, to basically be, to succumb to them and be overcome by them. And it works the other way as well. Sometimes some of the good people, some of the bad people, I suppose, you know, start to question what they do and why they're doing it, you know, and then they realize that they want it, they want tranquility and peace. They want to come over to the to the tranquil or the peaceful. So I'm just painting in the beast, and it's very rough painting. You know, 
it, it just it's a very I suppose loose style, very rough style. Lots of fun doing this. So to clean up edges and stuff, I use a selection tool. As you can see, I'm fixing up the horns to make them pop out a bit more. So I just use this uh, marquee selection and then just paint in that selection. So that way I don't get out of that to make the horns look very crisp and make them pop out for that beast. Going up to the smage again, making sure he pops out as well. He's he's the whole panel, so he needs to be in focus. With comic books, um, because you're working from panel to panel, each panel is an artwork in itself. So you can actually, I mean, it's up to you, but it's a good idea to kind of treat each panel like a separate painting and making sure that you've got a focus point on that panel you've got a focal point and in this case it's the energy ball that is summoning in the face of the mage you know he's summoning casting a spell he's the one that's he's one of the mages that's creating reality <laughs> that's what he's doing he's a loot he's a captive very sorry and he's creating reality there are other mages that do it at this point in time as well That's lots of fun. And here, once I've got all the values right, I start to paint in colour. And what I do is I just glaze in on the colour layer. And I paint in top, I paint above some colour in, and I get rid of some of it in areas. You know, if I don't want colour in areas, I get it, I take it out, separate it. But as you can see, it's just the one colour layer. And because the values have worked out, I think everything does pop out pretty well. Um, and because I've rendered everything, I've rendered the Titan in the background, I've rendered the Mage, I've rendered all my main characters, to a really good degree, it's very easy for me to put over a, a dash of colour onto the painting and it's already come, it's starting to come to life. Because it's a comic book as well, the good thing about the comic book is, you know, I'm not going for hyper-realism. Um, you know, there will be bits where it's quite realistic, but, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm able to play around with the colours and because it's a dream world, I'm able to have a lot of imagination and life to the work. I'm adding in blue in the sky as well. So I'm separating, what I'm doing here is I'm separating the background, the blues in the sky and the backgrounds versus the orange in the foregrounds and the characters, the earthen, earthy colours. 
And, and what I do is I create heaps and heaps of layers of colour. So I build up, I start off with one glaze of colour. If I'm painting an acrylic painting or I'm painting in gouache or whatever it is, you know, how I would traditionally paint, I build this up in layers. I create multiple layers, one layer after the other, after the other, after the other, uh, to build up colours. So I've, I've probably loaded up another layer here. Sorry, I didn't actually record my layer process only because um, I was focusing on, because I'm working so fast and I've got to get this page out, I'm, I'm working this page out within a day or two. Um, usually two days, not even. You know, I can't record the layer process. Um, here, I'm, uh, you do get the layers though in um, Patreon. We do send over the PSD so you can see all the layers, how it was made. But anyway, I'll stop talking about Patreon and talk about this. <laughs> Here I'm, I've gone to, I'm actually doing, applying an overlay layer. So I've got color in the background, I've got an overlay on top, a relay layer on top. And the overlay layer on top has allowed me to figure out the colors as well. So yeah, here it's just a matter of colouring. So I'm not talking it's because it's pretty much um, figuring out, well, there's nothing really much to say other than, hey, I'm colouring this painting. <laughs> so here I'm just adding, adding in details. Once I've applied colour on top, I then flatten things down again and then paint and, and get rid of all the line work, as much of the line work as I can and, and blend everything as much as possible, paint it all up. And what I do, because every, there are so many characters and they're all like competing for attention, what I end up doing is every character has a different colour. Uh, this, this, this beast thing ends up having greens and oranges in him. Um, the worm is blue and green. The, the beast on the right with the sword, the warrior, he has like red and kind of red and oranges. And then the uh, tide in the back is orange as well. I was pretty happy with this, so... Could not complain with this. So yeah, it's just a matter of going in with a colour bright, uh, uh, and a colour layer on top and painting in different colours to separate everything. I, I make sure I don't do it too uh, dramatically as well because the things you can go in and put in a lot of colour in areas but it's not needed. You know, you need to kind of softly apply it.
as you can see I'm just separating everything out and just making sure that things can be separated And also, you know, it's rendering the values. Once you put a bit of color into that, then you can blend that with the grayscale values. You can merge them together and start painting and detail everything and fix up things in them as well to render and pop out the character more. I hope my terminology makes sense. So. Again, I'm doing using selection tools. Um, this allows me to make sure the edges are crisp on his hand blade, whatever it is, his big hand sword. <laughs> and it allows me to create a crisp edge around that so that way it pops out. So, you know, use selections as well when you're painting. That will help, I suppose, make things work more efficiently. You know, you'll be able to you know, make sure that things look better. Crisper is the word. I think that's the best way to put it. And as you can see, what I've done to make him pop out is I've added in an overlay layer and I started with painting more whites and different colours into the character on the right so that he pops out. You know, he's, he's in the foreground so he should be popping out more. And same with that worm. Just apply, like I said, I would apply blues and greens to the worm monster. And that's what it's about. So every month I record my video process of comic book pages. Sometimes I record concept art as well. So I actually, every character, most of the time goes through a concept design phase. So I will actually have a painting of a concept of a character or a monster in the world or an environment. And I'll record a video on how I do the concept art. Um, I have comic book pages. I also have a voter topic, so I have a video every month of a finished fantasy illustration or a fairy tale illustration or a horror or sci-fi one. Depends what people vote in for that month. We usually have about 15 topics for people to vote from, sometimes more, sometimes less. And it just depends on how many people are voting on Patreon. And so you're going to get usually get two different types of videos. One has commentary, one is just a process video. And sometimes I surprise people and give them a bonus video if I'm feeling generous. It's not really about generosity, it's just like if I've got time to do it that month if there's no client work. Sometimes it does work in my favour, a client will be like, hey, I'm happy to commission you to do the work, happy for you to make a video, put it on YouTube or your Patreon, and they don't want anything for it, and they, and they pay me for the job and they're happy for it to be released. 
So it really depends on my schedule, but I try and give as much as I can to YouTubers and to people on YouTube and to people on Patreon. So this page, you know, I mean, there's still another uh, 17 mini minutes of me colouring it. But really all I'm doing at this stage is I've separated everything out. I've created selections. I've either created selections or different layers for each character, you know, or each area of the painting because I recommend you separating everything in layers from the monsters, the characters, to the environment, to the atmosphere, to the background, because it will allows you to play with things. It allows you, like in this case, I've got the Titan selected. I'm able to now highlight him and put him paint in an overlay layer and make him pop out more, adding whites to his skin. And and all I'm really doing is rendering in more color with the color layer. I'm rendering in more lighting and creating, um, you know, brighter areas and dark areas with an overlay layer. And I'm adding an atmosphere in the background as well. As you can see, I've painted a bit of atmosphere behind the Titan, drag the Titan, and the dragon, and it allows them to pop out more. So I hope that makes sense to you why I'm doing that. I think why is he doing that? But that's why. <laughs> and uh, and here even at the end, once I've established my color palette, the general color palette, I then go in with another brush. You can see there's a textured brush there that I've got. I'm adding more detail, more atmosphere to the scene, popping in things more. You know, I've added in, in greens to the planets because Luminous Age does start off in one world, but it does expand expand to many planets because people can teleport from planet to planet through dreams and they can enter on different planets it does all start off with Equatoria as one planet um, in the in the first you know two seasons but as we create more stories and subverse uh, other universes or other characters and, and uh, plots it will expand as well and obviously it will depend on popularity if people really like this and I can keep on making this um, and I get enough support then this, this universe can become huge. The main message of the comic is is that it has um, a message of environmentalism so there's this struggle for, for the, the planet of Equatoria it's, it's not it's I suppose the planet is dying the, there are dream worlds and and the way mages and way, the way creatures um, get their dream energy. They can get it naturally. They, some of them are born with natural dream energy and they can harvest it without damaging the planet. But some mages want the dream energy for themselves and they harvest the dream energy by killing dragons, hunting down dragons, um, hunting down other mages that are powerful. And also some of the, the nightmare mages will harvest land and and destroy the land as well. And, and there's, there are these things called dream wells. Dream wells are big lakes where dream, dream mages can baptize and get baptized in it when they are initiated as mages. And they use it as a source of their energy. And some mages corrupt those wells and they can, some of the dark nightmare mages, drain the land and the wells, the, the big lakes of their energy. So there's one, there's a message of environmentalism, you know, protecting the land, protecting the dragons and the creatures. It's done in a cool, a fun and cool way. It's not, it's meant to raise awareness of what's happening on Earth, for one. But um, that's the main um, storyline. But there's not just that. There's also uh, messages of equality. So there are female and male characters that are superheroes. It's not just men that are superheroes and have the powers to control dream energy and dream magic. There are great, strong, feminine femin feminine, characters in there. There are, you know, matriarchal figures as well as patriarchal. So, you know, there are, you know, male mages and female mages that are equally strong and, and are allied or again, and in some cases go against each other. And, and also then there's, you know, 
there's the creatures as well, you know, why are always dragons bad? <laughs> why are they always the bad guys? Um, so dragons and monsters sometimes can be good in this. You know, most of the time they are good and they have the ability to talk like you, like you and I can talk and they're quite intelligent. So there's this message of also animal equality and um, protecting animals and, and stuff. So here all I'm doing is I'm focusing, I'm adding a color dodge layer to the Titan and making sure he pops out with a color dodge layer. I'll go back to the story in a moment. But I'm just making sure that he pops out a lot and he looks really, really cool. You know, he is, he is the focus point on panel two, the bottom panel. So what I've done is in the color dodge layer, I just didn't sat there and added in bright colors and made him pop out more because he's kind of like, he's a Titan. He's, a, he's one of the gods. <laughs> So he's, he's in the image of one of the gods. And I'm doing that to the worm a little bit so that it creates focus point, focal points. And we want to make sure in the, in a comic book page, it is a busy page. Um, but you, you still want to make sure that there are focal points. So your main focal point is the Titan and the other characters. You, you notice the other characters and the planets. So going back to it, first, you know, what is Linus' Ages about? It's a fun world where, you know, Monster, you know, 13 gods and six races of creatures that are born of these 13 gods all have the power to control dream magic, you know, and do all sorts of crazy spells with dream energy. Okay, it's a battle between the dream world and reality. There's messages of environmentalism to save that planet Equatoria from being destroyed by dark mages, nightmare mages, who are hell bent, bent on you know, harvesting all the dream energy out of the land. And they want to harvest it out of the creatures as well. There's messages of equality, so ma male and female characters, the, the majors are very strong in, in both the women and the men. Lena is one of the main characters as well as Silver the Grey, but both really powerful female majors. Um, and then there's obviously Thrakos, who's the main boy that starts off on the journey. And there's a few other male characters. But also the female and male characters aren't just human. Um, there may be a male dragon or a female dragon. That's a main character that talks and lives in the village. There may be a dragon that lives in the village and is a friend with everyone. So there's also the message of, you know, animals are good. You know, they're not always bad. <laughs> and, and then the other message is multiculturalism as well. So um, I'm drawing... A lot of my ideas are drawn from many cultures, from the East, from China, uh, the West, you know, from England and stuff, but it's drawing, a lot of the ideas are drawn from, you know, North Africa, from Egypt, from, from the Mediterranean, Greece, from the Middle East, from Sumeria. So I'm drawing the, from the aesthetics of those cultures. Kind of like in Never Ending Story when you have the Sphinxes and they, in, where um, I think it's a tray who has to jump through the Sphinxes to get to the other side in Never Ending Story. They look very Egyptian or Sumerian. And so I'm using that kind of aesthetic, fantasy aesthetic. I'm drawing from Af the cultures of Africa, the cultures of um, Egypt, Greece, uh, the Middle East and China, and, and trying to give it a very multicultural aesthetic because at the moment comics are dominated by the West, all, um, you know, with Marvel and stuff. And that's great, I love that stuff. And they're also dominated by the East, totally by the East. So, um, you know, anime and stuff, which I also love. But what about in between? No one's doing anything in between, you know. So it's a bit of European style as well. So really this is a mash of many cultures in the aesthetics. But also in the characters, I want to have characters that, you know, m might look Middle Eastern or characters that look Asian, characters that look like they're from the Mediterranean characters that look like they're from Africa, you know, so people of different colours, humanoids, the humans in the world are of different multi different cultures and are also all equally powerful. So, you know, you could have an African guy who's one of the majors, the lead majors in, in the story, which he will be. We, I mean, Thrakos himself is Mediterranean. He looks, you know, like he's Greek, uh, maybe even Middle Eastern. So, you know, he is more Greek. <laughs> But, um, you know, each character is going to have, you know, a different aesthetic as well. And it's a lot to do. You may say it's a lot to do, but the universe, this fantasy world, is quite huge. 
And I suppose, you know, like my inspirations would be things like The Never Ending Story, things like The Labyrinth. And I think more than The Never Ending Story, just the aesthetics of The Never Ending Story, story have really affected me in a really profound way, in a good way, I hope. And um, I'm trying to bring that kind of surrealist, multicultural look to the comic. Um, and I'm hoping I can do something different in comics, you know, and I hope everyone likes it, you know. Because sometimes when you do something different and it's not like everyone else, it doesn't get the attention because people sometimes want to see what they're used to seeing. So hopefully you, if you do like this, please throw all your money my way. Well, not all of it, but throw some pennies my way so that way we can keep on making this comic. So here I'm just adding in more details. Um, the marks on this beast character with the sword, uh, they're the marks of the mage. So they, he's got like energy. Here I'm just tidying up this. It doesn't even get seen. I'm tidying up the worm. I'm, I'm cleaning up that area, but no one sees it. That's my OCD kick, uh, kicking in. So, you know, sometimes it's good to do that. You never know, because sometimes you may need, I did have to animate this, so it did work out for the better. You know, when I gave the files to my animator, she was like, oh, you know, I've got everything in layers so I can do stuff to it. So, so here I'm, we're coming towards the end of the video. All I'm doing is I'm just adding an atmosphere. All the finishing touches have been done. The main focal point, we made sure that the main focal point was the Titan. Um, I made sure that there's color throughout the piece. The way, the values are very similar for each character. You know, they're all very similar grayscale values, but the way I popped out and made every single character different was by putting different colors on each character and different color palette, slightly different color palette. I also made sure that there was more saturation with the Titan uh, in the background with the ponytail, simply because he is a main foreboding character that I want people to look at and go, wow. Um, when you read the story, this whole panel makes sense. I hope it does, anyway. I think it does. <laughs> I haven't had anyone say anything bad yet about it. So I hope that makes sense. But, you know, here I'm, in the, at the end, I'm just adding details into the ground, but making those rocks pop out more, and making sure that everything makes sense in the whole picture. Yeah, so it's just right here, it's just the last bit is just adding details, adding details to the environment. The main focus is the characters. And once I got the characters to a really good point, the dragon, everyone to a very, you know, a fantastic kind of point, then I'll go and touch up the environment. I do that last. Sometimes I do do it the other way around. I'm naughty. I go to the environment first, even though the characters are really important. I Traditionally, I really like painting environments and that's where I started out but I'm, I'm, I'm actually really loving characters and monsters now and that's why I created Luminous Sages and you know I do love painting dragons and I do like painting characters but for me at core I'm more of a world guy, world building guy um, but you know that changes, it goes in ebbs and flows you know here I'm just adding more fog and atmosphere making sure everything is cool. Now I hope that gave you some insight into how I paint comic book pages. Starts off with a pencil, go to grayscale values, then glazing colour with a colour layer and an overlay layer, then separate everything out into layers if you can. If you can't, that's, that's no big deal. You don't have to separate every character out. Um, sometimes I don't do that. And then just painting everything you know, um, blending in the layers. I haven't used, I've only used some textured brushes for the rocks and for the earth, the planets. I've used textured brushes for some of the characters, but I really refrain from using textured brushes. This is just using soft and hard brush. Use marquee selections as well. If you really need to make things pop out or you need things to be very clearly defined, you know, making sure the characters are crisp from, from, from each on each section and they're separated from each other. Make sure you use selection tools. And just render the thing up. You know, I did apply I think a colour balance to the final image to make everything blended, but I, I tried to stick with these blues, oranges and greens and stick to 
a limit to color palette. The thing is, if you have too many colors in a piece, it can ruin it. So I've stuck to very earth, earthy colors, so your greens and your browns and your oranges, and a touch of blue. I haven't added much yellow, I haven't added much red. If I added yellow and red to this, it would look extremely gaudy. So you, when you're using color, make sure you pick two out of the primaries to focus on. Either pick the red and yellow in your piece and have touches of blue, and a little bit of blue or purple. Um, but you know, or in fact, if you're going to use red and yellow, you'd be best to use purple versus blue for your shadows. If you're going to use blue and red, you're best off using orange versus yellow. Because if you use the three primaries in the work, they're going to be competing for attention on your page. And that's why I've stuck to blue and orange as the main colour palette and a little bit of green and that's it. But even the green has has tinges of orange in it as well. So it's all balanced, it's all unified. Here I'm just painting the, the markings of the mage. So luminary and captivaries are born with mar marks on them to signify that they're mages. They can switch it on and off once they become very powerful. But anyway, without further ado, I'd like to show you here, I've got the colour balance, this is the last colour balance I do, I put a colour balance in the whole image to, to unify the whole piece, give it some harmony. So, without further ado, again I'd like to say thank you all for watching this video, um, I hope it's helpful, I hope you can see my process of how I created this, I hope my information helped you out. I will do my best to record more and have more videos in the future. Um, let me know how many videos you'd like to see on YouTube. I'm hoping to do minim or definitely minimum two. I'm going to aim for three, but maybe even one every week. Um, I'd like to thank all my patrons that have supported me in making this, and I'd like to thank all my YouTube watchers as well. But um, if you really want to get more videos like this, you want to get a lot of content, you want to read the comic, you want to see my other art as well, and you want to see more videos and hear more more theory and, and learn also the business aspects of art, how to run a successful business, I do this full time. Um, you can, you know, subscribe to the Patreon, even like a dollar tier, we give great um, rewards to all our fans. And, it's, and, you know, it's only $10 a month to get uh, videos every month. So again, I want to thank you. Just go to patreon.com uh, forward slash Anthony Christou and um, yeah, it'd be great to see you there. I interact with everyone in the community if people send me messages or comment and posts. I get feedback and I help people out there and um, yeah, catch you there. So thank you very much for watching this and I hope it, I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.